complete here so today I'm going to start building this, the Tamiya Wild Willy 2. Now I've already done an unboxing video of this where I talk about all the Willy related fun I've had over the years so check that out if you haven't done already. So I'm going to build this with the Thrust brushless set, I'm going to add ball bearings, I've got an Etronics receiver and a pretty standard servo. Now step one to do with putting these rear suspension arms together and then you're attaching them to the gearbox here but what I'm actually going to do first is to uh, take this pre-assembled gearbox apart and put the ball bearings in and change the motor and pinion over. So in the back here it has got instructions about how to undo the gearbox but uh, I don't think I need that, it looks pretty straightforward. So there's these two screws to get the motor out. So this screw was covered by the motor before so I'll get that out now. So this is just a matter of getting these plastic and brass bushings out and replacing them with these 1150 size bearings. Check inside the diff while I'm here. Just going to add a little bit more grease in here. There, put a little bit of grease on in the factory. Just going to put a little bit more in here. Okay, let's just screw this back together. So what you get is this silver cam motor and the 18 tooth pinion. Uh, what I'm going to be using is this brushless motor from the Absima thrust set and I've got a 20 tooth steel pinion. Do you need though is this motor plate. So because the brushless motor hasn't got the bump on the top like the uh, silver cam motor it's sort of difficult to get these onto the motor and have them in the same place so the best thing is to put the screws through the gearbox and then put that on the screws on the other side of the gearbox and you can see on here it's got the uh, holes for the 20 tooth and the 18 tooth so I need to use the ones for the 20 tooth. Right so these need to go here and here and that goes on the back there. So another thing you've got to watch out for with the brushless motor not having a bump on it like the silver cam motor is to get the pinion at the right height. So I'm just going to measure this. So the top of the pinion is at 15 mil, so it's got to make sure it's the same on the brushless motor. So use a bit of thread lock on the grub screw. Okay, it looks about right. Need to get the motor so the wires are pointing generally upwards. Okay, so that's located onto the screws. Okay, so having sorted out the gearbox, back to step one, which is screwing together these rear arms with the 10mm self tapping screws. The only thing to make sure is these marks go together. Okay, so part two, we're attaching these upper arms onto the gearbox and we're using these step screws here. And there's a little note here about be careful not to tighten the screw too much, otherwise it'll uh, restrict the movement of the arm. Now, if you add a washer in between the parts, uh, then you can do the screw up very tight and it still won't bind. And also I tend to put a bit of super glue on the thread just to make sure these screws don't back out. You need to just make sure these parts are the same way around as in the picture, which is that way. Okay, put the screws through, just add the washer on the back. So I'm going to put a bit of super glue on, it's not essential, but uh, just make sure the screws can't rattle loose. There, so I've done that up very tight and you can still move that because the washer stops it binding. 
Okay, so the lower arm goes that way around, just needs one of these screw pins. I'm gonna put a bit of super glue on that thread as well. Okay, let's do the other side. Okay, so step three, putting together the wheelie bar, attaching it to the back of the gearbox, and just putting in these drive cups or gearbox joints as they call them. So it's just this F6 and F7, it's got this little shaft in between, and the wheel goes in here. The 10 mil self tappers again. Goes on there, pointing proudly upwards. Okay, so we need to put these rubber rings into the drive cups. The easiest way is just to use one of the dog bones. So they're saying about greasing this bit, which I don't think I need to do because I've got the bearings. I might just put a little bit on that where it goes through the diff. So step four, we're adding these uprights and with these step screws, I'm going to do the same thing as before and add these washers just to stop them from binding. Just add a bit of super glue to this again. Okay, so they're putting in the plastic bearing, I'm putting in the metal bearing. And the axle goes through there. So a little bit of grease on the dog bone here. Now step five, we need to set up the radio gear so we can centralise the servo. Now you may notice that the ESC and the servo look a bit grubby in second hand, and that's because they are. So this ESC has normally got a fan on it, but uh, the fan packed up. Uh, this was on my lunchbox and it went in the sea a few mini times. So I've taken the fan off and I'm hoping it will be alright air cooled, but if not I can replace that at a later date. And I think this servo works, I found it in my spares. So let's have a go. So I've got the ESC plugged into channel 2 and the servo is plugged into channel 1. That seems okay, so I've got the transmitter on central and I've put the trims to central. I've got the steering rate on max, so I'll leave that centred there. So you need to put on either B11 or B12 depending on your servo, so B11 seems to fit this one. So the little lug points that way. And then it's B6 which is the spring for the servo saver. So then it's E5, which is the servo horn. So they're just putting this non-slip washer on and then whatever screw fits your servo. And if you've got a servo with a metal spline, then you'll need to find yourself a machine screw rather than self-tapping one, but this one's plastic, so that's okay. What I'm gonna do in the kit also, you get this part B2. So I think it's better with that in there first and then the non-slip one, maybe a bit of grease on that to make sure the servo saver works. And I found myself a slightly longer 12 mil long self-tapping screw there. So I'm gonna use that one. I'll just put a bit of super glue on the end of this, make sure it doesn't come loose. Right, so I've still got this plugged in. Try and force it off centre and it does spring back to centre, so that's okay. So then there's just these ball connectors to go in here. So step six, we're making these tie rods for the steering, so just got to make sure there's a gap of 35 mil in between. That's about right, let's make another one. Okay, so we just need to attach these C11s to the servo and note this bit here where they're saying if uh, that measurement there in the servo, which is sort of from the underside of there to the top of the servo, is more than eight millimeters, then put them that way up. And if it's less than eight millimeters, then put them that way up. And I've measured this, it's about 10 mil from there to the top of the servo. So I'm mounting them this way up with that bit at the bottom. These just go on with the 10mm self-tapping screws on the washer. So these just clip on. So step seven, we're attaching the servo to the half of the chassis D1 here, attaching this 
E4 part here, which I think is what the battery holder clips into. That's just worth noting that these are with the 3x8mm screws, which look incredibly similar, but uh, just a tiny bit shorter than the 10mm that most things are held together with on this. This seems to go this way around with a hollow side outside. The servo goes in this way around with the wire at the back there, so the arm needs to go through that hole. And it's just a 10mm screw in that one. And there's a 10mm screw with a washer on the other side. So the next half of part 7 is to attach the other half of the chassis, which is D2, and most of it goes together with the 10mm screws, apart from the E4 part, which goes on with the 8mm screws again. So we also need to attach this bumper mount F3 here. Now on my GF01 and the G601, the Kong heads, I've broken this part very quickly and uh, I've done some bumper upgrades on those cars. I'm gonna build this one as standard for now and then uh, at the end I'll talk about the upgrades that I might do on this. So step eight is the front suspension arms, which is the C16, C17 parts. And you just got to make sure that these marks go together like that. So you see if you put them together the wrong way, then those marks don't match up. Just the usual 10 mil self-tapping screws. So step nine is pretty simple. Got these upper arms, which need to go on this way with the thinner end out and the thicker end towards the chassis uh, with the bar going that way. So they go on the step screws and I'm gonna add washers like before and the lower arms go on with this U-shaped shaft. Okay, there's a lot going on with step 10. You've got to make these uprights and attach them to the C hubs and then attach it all to the front of the car. Right, so the E2 and the E6 go together with a 12mm self tapper. Okay, so the upright goes in here. It's got a 22mm screw pin. The other side's the same. So the B1 goes this way up with the bigger knobble at the top. These little wide step screws that go in here. So what I've noticed having built the GF01 four-wheel drive version is normally that's the steering pivot there. On the two-wheel drive version that locks into there and then the steering is on that bit. This is just the F4 part which holds in the U-shaped shaft and then attaching the uprights and the steering. Right, so it'd be great just to put these two halves together, wouldn't it? Oh, that's gonna have to wait until next time. But in the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.